Alrighty guys, I'm going to make this video today. It's going to be on carrying a gun concealed with a round in the chamber versus not a round in the chamber. And um, let me show you why. Let me read this post here. This is a friend of mine. Um, uh, he's an awesome guy, and I don't mean this video in any disrespect at all to him. I just want to kind of clarify, I guess, like, or I guess, give my point of view. This is the is a Facebook post that he wrote, and uh, I believe the post is due to we've had two recent gun deaths in the state of Utah, just barely, that had to do with negligent discharges, and. Uh, and so, the one of which I know some details about, the other one I really don't know very much about, but we're just going to kind of talk about, talk about that. This is what his post says. Gun carriers, it is grossly irresponsible to keep around in the chamber. I quit. That's what the post says. Um, and then there's a couple people that commented on here. And then what I wrote on the, com I wrote a comment that says, it is irresponsible to not have training. And um, and then he wrote back and said, I also commented on here and said, I certainly hope you're not calling for legislation on the matter. And then he wrote back, definitely not. We all know that legislation on firearms punishes only the responsible. And this guy is a, he's a responsible, very conservative um, gun owner. Okay. I also agree with your training comment. If you are comfortable and confident with your firearm, cycling around in the chamber will actually take zero seconds since you can do it during your draw. Okay, so he's saying that it takes zero seconds extra time to draw your firearm, put around in the chamber. So he's basically saying there's not really any negative side effects of carrying the gun without the round in the chamber, there's just positive ones. So we're going to go through that a little bit. I'm going to give my opinion on it just a little bit. And uh, like, I guess I just have so much to say that there's really no way I can say it in a comment. Um, so we're just going to kind of show and go through some scenarios a little bit, okay? So first off, I want to talk about the, the one instance that I do know a little bit about. And that is a lady had a gun in her purse. And uh, I'm not sure what type of gun it was, whether it was a revolver or, a, or an auto doesn't necessarily matter either, but, um, but she had a gun in her purse and uh, a child got into the purse, grabbed the gun and accidentally fired a round off, killing the mother. Okay, so that's a crappy circumstance. We're going to talk about why having a round in the chamber, I mean, having a round not in the chamber in that circumstance would have saved the, saved that incident from happening possibly. But we're going to talk about why there were so many things done wrong before that instance that it wouldn't have mattered either way. Okay. So we're first off going to start off by the safety rules of firearms. Okay. So when I'm teaching a firearms class, there's four safety rules that you have to have to abide by. I only have four because I want to keep it simple. I'm not even going to go over the other three. I'm just going to go over number one. Number one is all guns are always loaded. Okay, so meaning that all guns need to be treated as if they are always loaded all the time. Okay, so it doesn't matter what condition the gun is, you treat it as if it's loaded anyway. Okay, and I've noticed that having an unloaded gun changes how people act around guns. Okay, so if you know your gun doesn't have a round in the chamber, how you treat it and how other people treat it. When you, all you gotta know, all you gotta do is go into a gun store and see how people react and act with guns that they know are unloaded at the gun counter. It's insane. You go into a Cabela's and you stand at a gun counter and you'll have a gun pointed at you every 30 seconds all day long. I know people who work at Cabela's and Sources Warehouse and they have more guns pointed at them working there than you could ever imagine it's because the gun is unloaded. Even when you're looking at a gun at the gun counter, don't freaking point at anybody. Don't ever point a gun at anybody for any reason unless you're actually trying to kill that person, okay? So treat guns as if they're always loaded, okay? And if you did that, 
that purse incident wouldn't have happened. Because you don't take a loaded firearm and drop it in your purse. We're going to talk more about that right now. Okay, so proper carry options. How you carry a gun, okay? I advocate that my students only carry guns in one way, and that is on their person, okay? So I'm going to show you some options right now. This is the gun I just took off of myself. It's car CM9 in a in a holster that I was carrying right here, and this gun is loaded, and there is one in the chamber, okay? But if you'll notice here, there's actually no way to actuate this firearm. This firearm is 100% safe inside this holster. I also would argue that there is no possible way that like a four-year-old kid or young kid or whatever could get this gun from me and shoot me with it without me knowing. There's no way. There's no way the gun's going to go off. There's no way the gun's going to go off on its own. And we're going to talk about that in a minute as well. So all your carry options should have the trigger guard covered, okay? Meaning that it should not be in your purse, okay? And there's another big reason for that too. Um, if this is on my side right here, always in the same spot, the gun's always in the same spot. I know to grab it from the same spot every single time, every time, okay? If it's in your purse, the gun could be sitting like this one time. This is a fake gun, by the way. So I can go ahead and point it wherever. The gun could be sitting like this, could be sitting like this, could be sitting like this, could be sitting like this. So you're fiddling around your purse trying to grab a gun, okay? And, you know, or while you're walking down the street at the mall, let's say. So your chapstick's in your purse too. Goes like this, gets through there, and the gun goes off. Okay? Because your chapstick got in the trigger guard. There should, every time you're carrying a gun, this should be covered, no matter what, no matter how you're carrying it. And it will never, ever go off, if that's the case. Okay? So that lady carrying the purse, the problem with that whole scenario was the fact that she was carrying a gun loose in her purse. Okay? It had nothing to do with the rounding chamber, because a little kid can grab a gun and be fiddling with it and go like that, just as easy as you can pull the trigger. Okay? So, the idea behind that is to not let the kid get the gun in the first place, or anybody else that matter. So every holster that I use, this is a Galco Classic Light, I use this holster all the time, and it also covers the trigger. This gun is loaded, just like I said before, I'm going to take this extremely dangerous loaded gun, I'm going to put it in this Galco so you can see that in the Galco holster, Absolutely no way I can get to that. This is a loaded gun. It's not going off. I'm trying to shoot it. It's not going off. It's a, this is an ankle holster for that gun. When it's in there, the trigger's covered. So it doesn't matter where you carry it. Whether you carry it on your side, carry it up here, carry it on your ankle. I often carry in a smart carry holster, which is down here. In every one of these holsters, the trigger is covered. That's essential. So you want to have it in a separate compartment. And the other reason why I don't, why I say you shouldn't carry it in a purse or you shouldn't have it off your person is because most crimes where you're going to want your gun, let's say a robbery is the crime where you're going to want your gun, um, they're going to be after your purse. They're not going to ask you for something in your purse, they're going to ask you for your purse. And if you ask for somebody's purse and they reach in there to get something out of it, you're going to shoot them or kill them, right, if you're a bad guy and you're after their purse. So, or they'll just run by and grab your purse then you've lost your purse and your gun. Okay, so you should have it on your person. It should be carried on your person. Not in a bag, not in a backpack or anything like that. Okay, it should be on your person with the trigger covered. Okay, let's see what else I have here. Uh, I was gonna talk about a little bit about the safeties built into guns. Um, all modern day guns have so many safeties in them that keep them from going off if they're dropped or anything like that. This gun happens to be a striker-fired gun, and blocks are striker-fired guns, and so on. So this gun will not go off. Uh, the firing pin is in the forward position until you pull the trigger. As you pull the trigger, the firing pin moves back and then is able to drop, and there's a safety that moves out of the way of the firing pin in the meantime. Okay, so if the trigger's not pulled, this gun will not go off. So in the movies, when you see somebody throw a gun across the room and it lands on the floor, and you, that only happens in the movies. It doesn't happen in real life. Maybe with a single action revolver from the 1800s, possible. With the new guns, 
Absolutely not. This is not even possible for the gun to go off on its own. Okay? The other reason why you should carry it around in the chamber instead, let's say it does take no extra time to draw the gun, which it, it absolutely does. We'll talk about that in a minute. But let's say it takes no extra time to draw the gun at all and, draw, and wrap it around into it and then go. 100% of gun failures happen when the gun actuates generally. Okay, So either when you shoot it, it's going to go off and jam, or when you actuate the slide the first time. Say you don't get a good actuation, you pull it back to here, kind of let it go, like you don't pull it back all the way, you short stroke it. Because you're going to have a lot of adrenaline, this guy's stabbing you in the face. So you're going to have a lot of adrenaline. So during that adrenaline time, you don't wrap the slide all the way. Or, we're going to talk about this in a minute, what if the guy's stabbing you in the face? Okay, he's, he's, he's on you, beating the crap out of you. And you've got two hands, and you're going to take a gun out and wrap around the chamber while he's beating you to death, or stabbing you, okay, or shooting you, and you're going to take this hand and wrap the gun instead of protecting yourself? I don't think so. And then the other thing people would say is, well, you don't need two hands to wrap the gun. And I've had a lot of training, hundreds of hours of training. We've had training where this arm goes down, where this arm goes down, you're doing mag changes and blah, 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 and wrapping it off your belt and all this kind of stuff. I can tell you right now, in a close quarters combat situation, which is most of them, most altercations where guns are used in a concealed carry fashion are under three feet. Okay, so if the gunfight's under three feet, you ain't doing all that stuff. You're getting beat on or stabbed, okay? So you're not going to be able to manipulate the slide, even if it doesn't take more time, which I think with a lot of training, you could get to the point where it takes just a little bit more time. You can get pretty fast, but there is no way. I've done enough competition shooting, and I've had hundreds of hours of law enforcement training. There is no way you could shoot as fast wrapping around the, in the chamber as you could without doing it. There's no way. My draw stroke is 0 0.06 of a second. There's no way I could add wrapping the slide without kind of be the same. Absolutely not. It's not even possible. Okay. Okay. So we're going to talk about a couple scenarios really quick. A robber with a knife. Okay. So technically, if someone comes up to you and says, hey man, give me your wallet. You cannot pull your gun in that instance because he's not showing you a life or death situation. So you can't t necessarily take your gun out until after a threat has been shown, okay? Um, and at that point, I'm going to show you in just a minute, it's probably too late, especially to wrap around the chamber, okay? And you're going to need this other arm. You have to have this other arm free. That's, it's essential to everything that we're going to show you in just a minute, is this arm has to be able to do other things, okay? Or if you're getting jumped, same scenario. Guy just jumps out of the bush, hits you in the face with a baseball bat. You go down to the ground. Now he's on top of you because he just hit you in the face with a baseball bat. He's just pounding on you, okay? You are not going to be able to use this other hand for anything other than defending yourself, blocking arteries, defending your head, stuff like that, while you're drawing the gun and shooting. And then an active shooter. Let's say that's another scenario. That's probably the only scenario where I think you may be able to draw your gun and wrap around. That's if you're still not doing anything with this other hand, like protecting your kids, getting them behind the table, uh, getting another guy out of the way, getting people situating yourself. Um, so I still think this hand is more valuable doing these other things, okay? And like I said, if you're carrying the gun properly, there's gonna be no safety aspect there's no safety lost by carrying it in the chamber. Not any at all, as long as you carry the gun correctly. Okay? So I'll show you a scenario real quick. I'm going to kind of move this camera over. You can see my sweet bikes over there. And what we're going to do, I'm going to drop this down just in here. I want to do this kind of quick. Okay? So what we're going to do, I don't have a timer on me. I'm just going to kind of show you really quick. Okay? So let's say the threat presents itself. And you don't necessarily know what the threat is. I'm a bad guy. This is your little princess here. Okay? It could be your wife. could be you. could be a kid, you know? A little princess deal here. Okay? And what I'm going to do is... I'm only going to have one shot of this, and I haven't practiced for a long time with a knife. So, we'll see how this goes. Okay? So, what I'm going to do is we're going to see... I'm a bad guy, okay? 
And you, you may or may not know that I have a knife because I've just got it in my pocket still, I haven't even drawn it. Okay, I'm going to show you how fast some of this stuff can go down. Okay, so I'm here. Most gun engagements happen from three feet, which I believe I'm about four, maybe five feet away at this point. So I'm actually going to give you a little bit, okay, a little bit of leniency there. So we're within three feet, okay. I'm the bad guy, I'm asking for your wallet. And you, for some reason, something doesn't go right, I just decided to kill you, whatever I'm gonna do, okay? So the threat's gonna present itself. I'm gonna show you how much time you have, okay, you ready? So that's from a draw. This is a fully knife from a draw. Let's take a look at that blend there. Got pretty jacked up. And I'm pretty out of practice right now, okay? So, Let's try it again from closer. Okay, we'll use this target for instance here. This is a slash cutting weapon, this, this particular knife is. So we'll do a slash cut on this target. We'll kind of see how it works out. Okay, I'm going to be a little closer this time. This is where most gun units happen. This is where I'm on your face pounding you, okay? And you are going to wrap around into the gun at this point. We're going to altercation in your face. Okay, so we have on that target from a draw. And I happen to know that my time on this is less than a second. From a draw, we have about a 20 inch slash cut across that guy's chest, okay? What about if I want a slash cut, stab? Okay, so this time I'm gonna go for his neck and stab him, okay? So I've slash cut again, even longer and stab into that guy in probably less than a second, okay? So how quickly can you draw from concealment, okay? For one, you've got to use this arm to get your garment out of the way. And here's what I'm going to show you now, okay? Let me load this guy up here real quick. And we'll go to the gun now, so I can show you how the gun's going to work. Sorry, this video's going to be so long. We'll put a couple of bullets in here, okay? Okay, here's the benefit to doing this. Okay, so there's a round chamber right now. I'm going to put this in my holster here, okay? And it's concealed, okay? So that's my concealed gun. This is generally where I carry it. Okay, so a few things have to happen for this draw stroke already. I have to clear my garment. So if this hand's busy, I can clear my garment with this hand. Okay, and get onto the gun. But the best scenario, okay, I'm a little bit farther away. I can clear the guard with this hand, but I still have this hand free to defend myself. Why well, that's important, say this slash cut, this neck cut is coming into you. Okay, if you go like this and drop into the target like this, there's nothing that can get you there with that slash cut. It's going to hit the outside of your arm, which doesn't matter. Okay, so this arm is crucially important to protecting yourself against that. Okay, so. Here's what we're going to do. We're close. We're in the same engagement, okay? I'm in a concealed situation. This guy's trying to kill me. I'm going to go like this. I'm going to drop down and protect myself. Now you notice that the first shots that I fired there, and that was not my fastest draw stroke, by the way, but the first shots I fired were from here, okay? How in the world, from this, from this quarter, so you need to shoot from here and then back up and engage the target just like I did. How are you going to rack the gun in this position? Unless you take your hand off and rack your gun down here, in which case you are 100% exposed to this guy, which you don't want to be 100% exposed to, okay? Or a baseball bat or whatever. It doesn't matter what the weapon is, okay? So, I've never practiced this, so we're going to see how quickly I can do it. I'm going to make sure I'm going to here and do that. Okay. Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to try to rack one in and see how quickly I can do that. I don't never practice this, so I'm really, really not out of practice. The only problem with it is, like I'm saying, you have to bring the gun up here first, where the guy can disarm you. Down here, you can protect your own gun from being disarmed. You bring your gun up here, and it gets knocked out of the way. I've had lots of training on how to do that too. So, we're in this scenario, again, I'm this close to this guy. Um, 
I guess my best option would be to like move out of the way, try to try to get out of the way as I'm doing it or something. I don't know, but I'm gonna have to use this hand for other things. So we'll, we'll see what happens here. So I'm gonna go like this, draw my gun. That was weird. I've never done that. So it's a lot slower, and I cannot shoot the gun. The fastest I can shoot the gun is from this position. In which case, this guy could disarm me. Super important when you're in this close in the combat situation. The gun isn't out here. You're not going to be able to go like this, like you do at the range, and aim and shoot, because he's going to go like this, because he doesn't want to get shot either. So, hopefully that video is not too long. I'm going to post this on my YouTube channel. And I mean absolutely no disrespect at all, because for the first year when I got my concealed carry permit, I was terrified to carry the gun loaded. So I did exactly that. I carried it without a round in the chamber. And then since then I've had hundreds of hours of training to understand how fight work, how fighting works and uh, how a gunfight really goes down. And I've come to the realization that that is just not actually possible. There's only one group of people in the world that I know of that carry that way. And those are the Israelis. And, um, and the Israeli military carries that way. And they're the only group of people that I know. Special forces, SWAT, uh, competition shooters, nobody. You'll never find anybody that doesn't carry their gun with around in the chamber. And it's because it's just not the best way to do it. It's, uh, it's just not going to work. In an actual situation, a real situation, it's not going to work. So... Right on. Thanks for the post, David. We'll see you.